All right, so, so we go over uh, basically what we're talking about. Got it. Yeah, what we're we talking about. We're talking about so the misconception is that people think when the feds raise the rates, Correct. that also raises interest rates. Correct. And you yeah. were explaining how that's not necessarily true. Yeah, I mean, and, and obviously it's easy to kind of confuse the two, but yeah, the federal rate increasing, uh, federal reserve increasing the Fed rate, it's really just trying to push that inflation number down. Um, so, uh, and at times it's expected, and when they do increase the Fed rate, it does uh, lower interest rates for mortgages. So, uh, so yeah, the main thing that we have to look into is really the inflation numbers when it comes to, to mortgage rates. Yeah. So when so when the Fed raises the interest rate. What is that? Are they, they're trying to fight inflation, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. They're That's trying really to fight the inflation. Main goal, yeah. And so, if inflation, if inflation goes up, then the rate goes up. That that's one thing, but also if the inflation number does not come down to the number they expect, uh, then that means that there's still more work to be done. Mm. So that can also affect mortgage rates. So that's what we're experiencing now. Correct. Yeah. So let's say you know there's a certain number they want to hit for inflation in, in the next inflation report. Mm -hmm. If that number doesn't come in at that number or under, then that can increase mortgage rates because we haven't we're not on track to what we want to do as a you know in the market. So yeah. right. And so right now they've they've raised it the last four weeks in a row. Is that correct? I think more than that. And I think they're going to have another uh, hike soon again. But that's expected because we're still not at the you know we're not at a healthy inflation number. You know mm -hmm. we, we need to get there. Yeah. Okay, so what do you what are your predictions for like the next couple of months? So I think the inflation report coming now in March is going to have some some data because uh, there, there's been some some lag with some of the data coming in, especially with shelter data. Uh, so I think we're going to have some improvements then. April report we might not see too much of an improvement. Uh, it might be a little bit more of a roller coaster until okay. May, uh, which leads me to May 10th. I think May th May 10th will be the the inflation report that a lot of people are going to start seeing some benefits in the market mm -hmm. when it comes to interest rates. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are asking me, "Hey, when should I buy?" You know, obviously we get that question all the time. And if you're trying to hit that, you know, that sweet spot, I think May is going to be that time. Everybody is trying to predict either a boom or a crash. Always. And so, you know, I get that from everybody. They're like, "Hey, I'm waiting. I'm gonna, we're going to wait." Yeah. You know, the market's going to take a nasty turn. I can tell. And I'm like, based off of what? What are yeah. you talking? You know, what are you basing this off of? Yeah. So you're predicting you're an optimist, is what you're telling me, For and sure. you're seeing sometime in May that we're going to get some good news and interest rates are going to kind of cool off a little bit, come down, and that will obviously make getting a house a lot more affordable. For sure. I think once the, the word gets around that rates are dropping, mm -hmm. obviously we've seen some depreciation values in a healthy way. I think, and we have a lot of dormant buyers, right? But there's still people right. wanting to buy it, they just can't qualify. Right. So the moment they can qualify, yeah, we're gonna see some traction there. And not only that, we'll, we'll see the refinance kind of market come back. Not as crazy as it was 2020 and 2021, but we'll see some movement on the refi side as well. So I'm mm -hmm. with you. I'm an optimist too. I think yeah. that as soon as people start to get used to these rates, or if they even come down just a little bit, yeah. I mean, we saw it, right? Last, what, in February, January, February, we saw like the largest uptick in mortgage applications That's that right. we've seen yep. in a very long time. That's right. Just from a little bit of cooling off of those yep. interest rates. Yep. I mean, the buyers are still out there. For it's sure. just people are waiting because they're so scared and they don't understand. That's right. You know, and there's so, so many other things. So we can, you have rates coming down, then you have the 2-1 buy down on top of a lower rate. So we've gotten creative in the last six months. Give us a 30-second rundown of a 2-1 buy down. 2-1 buy down is a great way to save money the first two years of being under your mortgage. So if you can save $7,000 in monthly payments those first two years, as an example, plus a lower rate, I think people can benefit. But yeah, 2-1 buy down is basically you're saving money the first two years, but it has to be paid by the seller. The seller pays a, a, a credit at closing Correct. for their rate to come down X amount of points, depending on how much they put down, which lowers their monthly payment for two years. So they they don't buy down the rate; they're just buying down the monthly payment. They're so buying they, down the monthly. So if payment. their rate is a six percent, they'll make payments as if as if they had a four percent the first uh -huh. year, five percent the second year, and then it goes to their regular rate of six percent. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay, now I understand yeah. better. Yeah. Awesome. All right, how's that? Is that good? Yeah. Cool. I know you got to run, so. No.